having a broken leg allows you to really understand gratitude, gratitude for your yoga practice. When others need a lot of assistance to put on their pants, um, you, because of your flexibility, can put on pants pretty easily. The doctor and the physical therapist will tell you to keep your weight off of your broken leg. And as you do, it's best to just stay grounded. And one way to get around without hopping around and uh, ensuring misalignment as you take all of your weight on one leg repeatedly is to get around on the floor. And so we've got a great technique in yoga it's called butt walking. So you start in Dandasana, this seated pose, lift up one hip, draw in from the foot to the pelvis, reach out and do the opposite. Lift the opposite hip, first pull in before reaching out. So your step is pretty big on your sit bones. As you lean over, Draw in first and then extend out. This allows you to get a lot of speed, a lot of distance covered as you walk and you're mobilizing your hips and activating your legs and staying very safe. So it's a fabulous way to do your yoga practice and to stay safe and to mobilize yourself to the bathroom or wherever you need to go. The next thing I'd like to talk about is how to get yourself up and down. And unlike others, you've got a distinct advantage. You practice downward facing dog. So I'll get back on the mat just to show you this technique. As you bend your knee, do a twist as if you're doing a version of Marichasana. And in that twist, just lean into it so that your hands now can bear weight, so much weight that as you pivot on the bent leg, you can come up to this modified downward facing dog where the broken leg is free. There's no weight bearing on that leg. And in the same way, you can come down by bending the knee and drawing yourself back into the seated pose, all while keeping the, the broken leg very safe. And it's a really good way to lift yourself up through Uttanasana. So we'll try it again as you twist, take your hands over to the bent leg side, lift yourself up, walk your hands in, and now you can grab your crutches or whatever as you lift up and coming down the same way, you can come through downward facing dog, bend the knee, pivot the bent leg, and you're back in seated pose again. Another thing is, especially if you're using crutches, you'll want to open your chest more. And I have a rolled sticky mat here so that you can lie down and take your elbows right on the rolled mat. And just allow yourself to draw over it so that you can just practice a supine back. Now, at first, this may not feel so good because the upper body gets very contracted. So you may want to roll a towel or something that's a little bit more forgiving, but it allows you to just to open up the upper chest really nicely. And you breathe into it. 
you expand and open the upper chest. You stay in the pose for several breaths. And when you're coming out of the pose, you bend your good leg and just draw over to the side to lift yourself up. Another pose that's very restorative is Viparite Karani. And to do that pose, we'll be at the wall. So move yourself to the wall and start in Dandasana. Now, again, at first, this may not be so accessible to you. You know, you just uh, you have to work with it. Sometimes elevating your foot is really is not going to work for you. So as you come to the wall, you can take your pelvis as close as you can get it. Use your hand to lift your broken leg up. Lift the other leg up. And just rest your feet at the wall. And again, you have to be the judge. At first, this is going to be really tough to handle. But over time, you can work. You know, you can start five breaths and come out of the pose, back to Dandasana. And just keep on increasing your time here. You don't want to be really close to the wall when you start, but you'll see over time you'll be able to get slightly closer to the wall. To come out of the pose, you want to make sure that you've got control of your leg that you're rehabbing and take it down and come back to Dandasana. Now, there are several other poses and um, as you're able to move a little bit more, they can all be these seated poses. You can come to Upavista Konasana by spreading your legs and coming forward. You can do twists in this wide leg stance. And over time, you might even be able to do this pose called Bridget's Cross. So let me show you. You do the twist. Lift yourself up, swing your leg, reach your leg forward, and come down. So it's a, it's a variation of pigeon pose where both legs are straight. And you can just help to open the pelvis in a nice twisting action. And your leg is completely supported by the earth. The back leg is straight as well. So you can just pause in this pose. And you come out of the pose back to Dandasana. You'll be using your shoulders so much and your back's going to get to get so contracted in the process that you'll start to round. So it's quite important that you not shorten your spine even more like this. Use your strap. Take your strap around the base of the toes there. Sit tall in that Dandasana version. Bend your elbows and draw your heart toward your toes. Now, You'll want to just kind of collapse forward and down, but try to avoid that by all means. Just see if you can get the back side of the legs to extend and the front side of the legs 
to contract. Now, how do you do that? As you gain a little bit more flexibility in the broken leg, you'll be able to lift the kneecap. So on the good leg, see if you can draw the kneecap up toward your pelvis. You'll get a little dimple there at the top of the leg. So you're really drawing from the toes to the kneecap, the kneecap up to the pelvis. But just see over time if you can get like the, some pulsation, some movement of the knee to do the same thing. Because you don't want it to be coming into a forward fold where one leg is very uh, active and the other is, is in kind of this atrophied state, which is why we don't go very far. So you just keep the spine straight and long and draw your heart forward. Precursor to Sutta Panangustasana, where you'll need your yoga strap. So the pose your physical therapist will have you do is with one knee bent, just try to lift the other leg. Lift the leg. And at first, just getting it off the ground is going to be really complicated. Keeping your brace on at all times. It's a heavy brace, adds more weight and makes it more difficult, but it keeps you safe. Now, at some point after doing this for quite some time, multiple weeks, you'll be able to actually lift up the leg, place your strap around the lifted leg, and just hold on to it. See if you can do it without hand, without holding on and holding on. Press into the strap and see about just moving the leg over to one side and back and maybe doing the twist. Take the leg all the way to the side. And um, just make sure that you support the leg as much as possible. It can be just by holding on to the brace or you can have your strap help you out as you slowly, slowly, and carefully protect the leg as you take it down. To end your practice, of course, you might want to go to Shavasana. You can either stay in Shavasana or continue practicing some of these poses. May you heal yourself safely and come back to your full yoga practice. Namaste.